Hello and welcome to the next video in the Adeptus Custodes review series. It's time to answer that age old question, or at least from 2017 onwards, should I take Alaris or Aquilins? This video aims to give you an overview of both units and the different stratagems available to them. Then take you into some math hammer and go deep, evaluating the weapon loadouts for range and melee against enemies both single and multi wound from toughness 3 through 8. Then draw it back together with which unit is more cost efficient for their points, aka what gives you the most bang for your buck, and what should you field on the tabletop in the current meta. If you like what you see or have some questions, leave a comment below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Without further ado, let us begin. Alaris Custodians. These are handpicked by the Captain General himself for their ferocity and are garbed in Alaris Terminator plate. They teleport in amongst the enemy and cut the head from the snake, and oh my mighty man-emperor of mankind, do they have a raw set to match. These mighty warriors have a stat line that makes a Primaris captain run back to Mars. They clock in with the standard strength and toughness 5, and 2 plus save, 4 plus plus invulnerable. And that is where the standardness stops. They have an attack and wound extra giving them 4 attacks and wounds base and an extra point of leadership, making them leadership 9. No matter your weapon choice, every Alaris is rocking a Ballistis Grenade Launcher, range 12 inches, Assault D3, Strength 4, AP-3, Damage 1. Then they have the choice of either Guardian Spears, which let them strike at Strength 6, AP-3, Damage D3 in combat, or for an extra 5 points per model, Castellan Axes, which lets them strike at Strength 8, AP-2, Damage D3 in combat. They also have an option of 3 points per model to be equipped with a Misericordia, which strikes in combat with an extra attack at Strength 5, AP-2, Damage 1. They also have two great standard abilities baked into their profile. First up, Slayer of Tyrants. When models in this unit pile in and consolidate, they can move up to 3 inches towards the nearest enemy character, even if it's not the nearest enemy model, as long as they finish this move within 1 inch of an enemy unit. Next up, from Golden Light. During deployment, you can set this unit in a teleport array instead of setting up on the field. At the end of your movement phases, they can set up anywhere more than 9 inches from any enemy models. And finally, to conclude this overview for Alaris, unit specific stratagems. They have three, starting with concussion grenades. This gives their ballistic grenade launcher AP0, but if infantry units are hit by it, then they are stunned till the end of turn. This is useful and it gives them minus one to hit in close combat and prevents overwatch. So it's great for their survivability. Next up, Inescapable Vengeance, which allows them to target enemy characters even if they are not the closest unit. This is great for sniping buff characters and pushing that last bit of chip damage onto tougher characters. And finally, last but certainly not least, Unleash the Lions, their signature stratagem. This allows you at the beginning of your movement phase to split your Alaris into one man squads it is very powerful and gives you a lot of tactical flexibility, forcing your opponents to split their fire and overkill one-man units whilst helping you spread out and take objectives and generally cause chaos. On to the other contender, Aquilin Custodians. The Heresy Era Terminators, clad in heavy assault Aquilin plate, wielding potent weapons from the Unification Wars. These bad boys weigh in similar to their younger Alaris brothers, with a stat line of Strength and Toughness 5, Wounds 4 and Attacks 4, along with Leadership 9 and the standard 2 plus and 4 plus plus invulnerable. They have access to one of the same abilities as Alaris from Golden Light. The key differentiator though in the two profiles comes from their ranged and melee weapon options that the Aquilins have access to. They are 75 points base. For melee, the Solarite Power Gauntlet is the Custodes version of the Power Fist, letting them strike at Strength 10, AP-4, Damage 2 or the Solarite Power Talon, the Custodes version of the Lightning Claw, letting them strike with an extra attack, bringing the total up to 5 attacks, Strength 6, AP-2, Damage 1, but most importantly, re-rolling wounds. These options are cost neutral, adding no additional cost. For range, we have the base option, which is the Laestrum Storm Bolter, range 24 inches, Rapid Fire 2, Strength 5, AP-1, Damage 1. For an extra 10 points, you can select one of two options, either the Infernus Firepike, range 15 inches, heavy D6, strength 6, AP-1, damage 1, the auto hits, or a twin Adriatic Destructor, range 18 inches, strength 5, AP-3, damage 3. 
So, into the math hammer. To compare these units effectively, we will contrast the effectiveness of each possible loadout per 200 points. They will then be compared at their effectiveness of killing low toughness, one wound models, mid toughness, multi wound models, and high toughness, effective damage. At each stage, we will look at the number of wounds, effective damage, and translation to models lost. As in the end, it doesn't matter how much damage you do if you only need one wound to kill the model. Just a note, when comparing Alaris ranged weapons, we will use their combined models lost for a low toughness comparison and combined effective damage for high toughness evaluations as they have two weapons. At low toughnesses, we are going to compare against several options you may see on the battlefield. We'll start with the classic toughness 3 model, the Humble Guardsman, moving to everyone's favourite horde, toughness 4 Orc Boys then on to Toughness 4 2 wound Intercessor Marines, and finally on to Toughness 5 3 wound Heavy Intercessor or Gravis Armoured Marines. Going from the top down per 200 points, Aquilan Firepikes have 8.8 .8 shots, Laestrum Stormbolters out of rapid fire range have 5.3 shots and 10.7 shots within rapid fire range, and Twin Adriatic Destructors have 4.7 shots. Looking to the Alaris with Castellan Axes, per 200 points they have 5.3 Ballistus Grenade Launcher shots, and with their Castellan Axes have 2.7 shots out of rapid fire range and 5.3 within rapid fire range. Looking to Alaris with Guardian Spears per 200 points, they have 5.7 Ballistus Grenade Launcher shots, and with their Guardian Spears have 2.9 shots out of rapid fire range and 5.8 within rapid fire range. Now, let's see what these translate to when you look at the models. Starting with Toughness 3, One Wound Guardsman with a 5+. Firepikes are the most effective at killing 6.1 models. In second place, we have Alaris with Guardian Spears, killing 4.5 or 5.8, dependent on rapid fire range. Third, Alaris with Castellan Axes, killing 4.2 or 5.4, dependent on rapid fire range. And fourth, Laestrum Stormbarters, killing 2.5 or 4.9, dependent on rapid fire range. And finally, bringing up the rear, twin Adriatic Destructors, killing 2.6 models. These results are broadly expected as firepikes are supposed to be the anti-horde weapon of choice whereas the destructors are anti-elite. Looking now to toughness 4, one wound, orc oh, boys. Laestrum Stormbolters in rapid fire range are the most effective, killing 5.9 models or 3 without rapid fire range. Firepikes have dropped to second as they now wound on 3s, killing 5.8 models. Followed by Alaris with Guardian Spears, killing 3.6 models out of rapid fire range or 4.8 within. Then Alaris with Castellan Axes, killing 1.5 out of rapid fire range or 2 within. The Alaris options have dropped down as their weapons are only strength 4. Twin Adriatic Destructors are once again bringing up the rear with killing 2.6 models. Looking at how these weapons stack up against Toughness 4 2 wound models using the example of Intercessors or Infiltrators. Twin Adriatic's Damage 3 finally comes in use and they kill 2.3 models. Alaris with Guardian Spears follow up closely, killing 1.6 models out of rapid fire range and 2.2 within. In third place, jointly, Firepikes and Alaris with Castellan Axes, killing 1.5 models out of rapid fire range and 2 within. Laestrum Stormbarters have dropped from top dog to bottom of the pack as they are not as good against 3 plus saves, killing only 0.7 models out of rapid fire range and 1.5 within. Taking it up a level now, evaluating against Toughness 5, 3 Wound, Heavy Intercessor, Gravis Armoured Marines like Inceptors or Aggressors. Twin Adriatic's Destructor's damage of 3 is still MVP, killing 1.6 models. The Firepike moves up to number 2, killing 1 model per turn. The Alaris with Guardian Spear and Castellan Axes are in 3rd and 4th place respectively, killing 0.7 models out of rapid fire range and either 1.0 or 0.9 respectively within rapid fire range. Once again, the Laestrum Stormbotters are bringing up the rear with only 0.4 models killed out of rapid fire range and 0.7 within. What this shows is that for killing lower toughness single wound models per 200 points, Aquilans are better with the Firepike, but Alaris's two weapon options are strong choices too. When looking to mid toughness multi wound models, Aquilans with twin Adriatic Destructors are the only way to go, with the rest of the weapon options experiencing a damage fall off. Moving on now to look at higher toughness examples. For these, we are assuming them to be high wound models, so we'll only be contrasting the effective damage. As the results are broadly similar for these, I'm not going to go through it line by line, but instead comment on the general trends. Through toughness six to eight, 
The Twin Adriatic Destructor is the preferential choice, dealing 3.3 effective damage. In second and third place across the board, we have Alaris with Guardian Spears and Castellan Axes, with their two weapons continuing to do work. However, that starts to fall off at Toughness 8. The Fire Pipe gradually falls in effective damage, doing 2.2 against Toughness 6 and 1.5 against Toughness 7 and 8. Bringing up the rear as normal since Toughness 4 multi wounds were introduced, Laystrom Stormbolters, doing a consistent 0.7 damage across the board out of rapid fire range or 1.5 within. What this shows us in summation is that Aquilans with twin Adriatic Destructors are the prime choice for vehicle hunting and multi wound monster killing at high toughness. Both Alaris remain viable throughout, only slightly falling off at toughness 8, and Aquilan anti horde options bring up the rear as expected. For the melee analysis, we shall again compare at 200 points against the same opponents we've just reviewed for range. This time the combinations are slightly different due to the varying points costs per model, as Aquilins with Firepike or Twin Adriatic Destructors are 10 points more than the base variant, so they will get less attacks per 200 points. Going from the top down per 200 points for Aquilins with Firepikes or Adriatic Destructor, Solarite Power Gauntlets will get 9.4 attacks, and Solarite Power Talons will get 11.8. For Aquilans with Laystrom Stormbolters, Solarite Power Gauntlets will get 10.7 attacks and Solarite Power Talons will get 13.3 attacks. Alaris with Castellan Axes get 10.7 attacks and Alaris with Guardian Spears get 11.4. Against Toughness 3 one wound models, Solarite Power Talons are the optimal choice, killing either 10.8 or 9.5 models depending on range weapon choice. Alaris then bring up the mid-pack with their Guardian Spears and Castellan Axes doing 7.9 and 7.4 damage respectively. And somewhat unsurprisingly, the Solarite Power Gauntlets are last, with 7.4 or 6.5 models lost, dependent on range weapon choice. Looking against Toughness 4, One Wound Orc Boys, we see the mostly same repeated order, but with slightly lower models killed for the Talons and Guardian Spear. Solarite Talons are still first, killing 9.9 .9 or 8.7 models, dependent on range weapon choice. Joint third is taken by the Alaris with Castellan Axes and Base Aquilans with Solarite Power Gauntlets killing 7.4. Fourth place is Aquilans with Upgraded Range Option and Solarite Power Gauntlet killing 6.5 and the last is Alaris with Guardian Spears at 6.3. Looking against Multi-Wound Toughness 4 Marines, we see the continued rise of the Aquilans with Power Gauntlets coming in first and third. The Alaris options are second and fourth, starting to see damage fall off and less models killed while Solarite Power Talons have a large fall from the podium positions to 5th and 6th respectively, as 3 plus base saves and 2 wounds are enough to nearly halve their damage output. Looking towards Toughness 5, 3 wound Gravis Armoured Marines now, the Solarite Power Gauntlet continues to dominate the opposition, killing an impressive 4 or 3.7 models, dependent on range weapon choice. The Alaris Guardian Spears bump up to 3rd, as the Alaris Castellan Axes are starting to see their effective damage slide, which sees less models killed with them taking 5th place. And finally, rounding out the lower ranks again in 4th and 6th, Solarite Power Talons. Looking now to the high toughness options and comparing them the same as ranged, we will look to only see the effective damage as these toughnesses are typically dominated by high wound vehicles. Also, the same as last time, I'll only commentate on the trends as a whole as they tend to stay the same throughout. The Aquilan options with Solarite Power Gauntlets are the number 1 and 2 options by a commanding distance. There is no competition. If you need a Monster Slayer or a Tank Busting, you call them. Bringing up the mid-pack are the Alaris options. Unsurprisingly, the Higher Strength Castellan Axe is the best Alaris option, but the most surprising reveal is just how little the difference is between the Castellan Axe and the Guardian Spear. As at Toughness 6 they do the same effective damage and at Toughness 8 the gap is only 0.6 effective damage. Finally, bringing up the rear, somewhat unsurprisingly again, is the Solarite Power Talons. These anti-infantry weapons are no real match at the higher toughnesses with the anti-tank or anti-elite choices. Even using the Slayer of Nightmares stratagem, their damage output only just matches the Alaruses. So rounding up. This is going to be a multi-part nuanced conclusion, as you might expect from having watched the video. Before we jump into that though, in case I lose any of you partway through, the next chapter will include a summary page against the variety of enemies and the optimal loadouts, and don't worry, minimal voiceover from myself. Back to the conclusion. Aquilans in every category, be it shooting or range, single or multi-wound, and whatever the toughness, either kill more models or pump out more raw effective damage and kill more models than the Alaris. At high melee toughness, 
it's nearly double the damage. They are the most cost efficient option available. That's not to say though that the Alaris are a walkover. They hold their points well and deal respectable damage. They have a strong suite of stratagems however that elevates their potential. These are impossible to put a mathematical value on, however it is important to recognise their game winning potential. Their signature stratagem unleashed the lions with a 7 to 10 strong Alaris squad in the middle of the enemy can be game winning as it forces your opponent to split their fire. Same as inescapable vengeance allowing you to snipe that pesky buff character or concussion grenades adding minus one to hit them in close combat can swing the tide of a fight. Whether you choose Alaris or Aquilans you will pick a very strong unit. In choosing Alaris you will need to accept their lower damage potential and build in a plan for high toughness units to compensate for their lower damage and save up command points to make the best of them. In choosing Aquilans, you will need to accept their reduced tactical flexibility and take advantage of other options open to you, as you can now look to include other heavy CP units like Venetari. The Aquilans will either be your anti-tank or your anti-horde, as they can be specialised to be effective at both. Your anti-tank would be equipped with Solarite Power Gauntlets and Twin Adriatic Destructors, whereas your anti-horde would be dependent on meta. If Harlequins are still the kings, then Infernus Firepikes and Solarite Power Talons, or if Mass T4 Power Armor makes a comeback, then Laystrom Storm Bolters with Solarite Talons are the best ways to go. These are the most cost efficient options against your opponents, as we can see from our analysis. For me personally though, I'd choose Aquilans, as it will allow me to utilize a variety of other Custodes units and allow me to spend my command points elsewhere rather than using a big Alaris death ball that's command points intensive. They would need to be taken in small squads of three with specific roles to pick off enemy backline units and harass as required, forcing the enemy to divert firepower to deal with small 225-240 point units that can hit larger than their points would suggest. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and leave a comment below.